Hey guys, today's video for Diablo 2, we're just going to be going over the basics. So real quickly, I'll go over, um, like we said before, there's seven different classes in Diablo 2. And the um, skills and stats, everything kind of is very similar to an old school roguelike game. Uh, then you've got these little life orbs and mana orbs, That's that keeps track of your life and your magic power basically, mana. Um, also, uh, you have a certain run walk speed. Um, you have a little stamina bar, this yellow one down below, and it slowly drains as you run, so you can kind of see right there. You run out of stamina, that, that doesn't become... It's only important in about the first ten levels of the game, and it's pretty much a useless uh, part of the game. Stamina becomes irrelevant pretty fast. Um, but those are the first, uh, I guess, portions of your utility of your survival in this game um, next we'll talk about your stats so the stats are strength dexterity vitality and energy and I'll explain a little bit in detail what each one of those does um, also you notice at the top it shows your total experience points uh, out of how many you need to the next level. It's also going to be tracked on this little bar above the yellow uh, running guy for your stamina too. Um, now, every class starts with a different amount of these skill points. A uh, bar obviously starts with 30 strength, 20 dexterity, 25 vitality, and 10 energy. Um, now before we get into these stat points and their meticulous details, uh, let's just go over the basics of strength. Um, you need a certain amount of strength to, to equip most gear. Um, heavier metal armors require more strength. Uh, lighter armors require less. Kind of similar with weapons. And dexterity is required also for certain types of weapons like bows and arrows, javelins, um, swords, just basically most more agile weapons. Blunt heavy weapons like maces and some axes don't require any dexterity. Dexterity also boosts your attack rating, which increases your chance to hit. Um, it also boosts your defense rating, which makes you take less damage when you get hit. Um, it increases your block chance if you have a, a shield equipped. Um, and it also increases the damage that you do with ranged attacks, uh, ranged physical attacks like bows and arrows and throwing weapons and that kind of thing. Vitality is basically life. Um, it gives a different amount of life points per point in vitality. Like barbarians get four per point in vitality. Sorceresses and necros get like two. So it varies depending on the class. It also gives you stamina. Stamina is completely useless, so we won't worry about that. Uh, energy is basically mana points, similar to life or vitality. It gives you points into your mana pool. The next thing I'd like to show you is uh, this little toolbar down here. It's got a few different things. Uh, lets you open your inventory, check your character, check your skill tree, pull up the mini map, the game menu. Now, you don't have to click any of these. They all have hotkeys, but this is uh, your character's inventory. You got two different weapon slots. Um, you got places to put all your different gear onto your character, um, and you can fit items in that inventory below. Those are like your holdover items in that four by ten block row. That's kind of where you store everything you pick up that you're not currently wearing. Um, also you have this little belt slot here um, and the potions on the belt slot uh, they fit directly into your belt. You don't need a belt to keep potions on there but having a belt increases the capacity for carrying more potions. Like this, I put on this regular belt, and that gives me a uh, 3x4 now instead of just a 1x4 space. Um, so that's pretty useful. Now let me exit out of here, and I can show you one more of the important things that you can do with belts. So with belts, if you press the number buttons, 1, 2, 3, or 4, on the slot, it'll use a potion in here. So let me use one. And you notice that the potion above dropped down into the belt slot. So they auto kind of feed for you. It's a way to just hotkey the potion. Also, you can set other items uh, like scrolls to your belt slot. That way you can use them quickly 
uh, I don't know why you'd need an identi identity scroll there. Uh, identify unidentified items with these scrolls. You can usually just leave them in a book in your in your inventory, or you can uh, make a town portal. Those are the ones that are maybe a little more useful in your belt. I still don't do it, but some people do. Um, now, a town portal is a portal you make with one of these scrolls, and it takes you back to town. Um, going back to town when you're away from the town area, and if you notice, I'm spamming tab right there to uh, bring up the mini-map so you can see that as well. But being able to travel back to town is really huge uh, in a game like this. So you can go vendor items, do all that kind of stuff. I'm going to run and punch this zombie just so you guys are entertained a little bit. Um, so that was me left-clicking with normal attack on a barbarian, which just punches stuff. Um, but anyway, that is the basics of the mechanics of the game and how that kind of stuff works. Uh, so let's go into a few more things in a little more in-depth. So now that we've covered a lot of the stats, let's talk about skills for a few minutes. Each character starts with skills from three different um, trees and they, they're different for each class um, and you get one skill point per level uh, as well as a few extra skill points from a couple quests but you can spend those skill points on skills within the skill trees and you have to start at the top of the tree and descend down the skill tree um, so let me start by putting uh, a few points into each of the skills so you guys can get an idea with you know what they're kind of like but uh, as you notice I couldn't pick up whirlwind until after I put all my points in the lower parts of the tree uh, then there's other trees this combat mastery is one for example for barbarian these are all passive abilities uh, there's some increased speed, iron skin, um, resistances, uh, natural resistance. So we didn't talk about resistances. Uh, let's go pull up the character screen again, and I can kind of show you resistances. So resistances are displayed below. You can usually get, a, get them on gear or through skills like natural resistance here. And you have fire resistance, cold resist, um, lightning resist, and poison resist. So those are just the three or four different types of magic. Um, that you can basically make yourself more uh, resistant to. The higher you have those, those are percentages. So if you have 75 in that, you'd be 75% resistant to that ability. Um, also, you can get, I just showed you, you can get them through your gear. Um, and then these other abilities are just kind of like, um, you know, buffs and kind of passive ability. Not passive, but uh, little niche abilities for the Barbarian. Um, but I'll explain a little bit more about how those work. Let's get some gear on first, though. We can kind of test this bar about gear. So, uh, let's see. Use a battle branch. Oh, you know, one thing I didn't talk about yet was, first of all, this mod. I have an ex extended stash. I have an unlimited stash here. Um, but also, I didn't really talk about the ethereal items. Um... We can talk more about itemization, but let me get a few more things on this character. Um, so, where's the other one here? As you can tell, there's different strength requirements. Uh, like that really heavy armor is 100 strength required. This is only 48. Um, so, let me, let me get the rest of this gear on here. Okay, so here's here's the good way to explain ethereal. So ethereal items do 50% more damage or 50% more defense, depending on if they're armor or weapons, but they can't be repaired. So if they break, they're dead. You can't use them again. So uh, more damage, but more likely to break. So for this example, we're just going to use the regular item. Um, ethereal items tend to be good for mercenaries because you your mercenaries' items can't break. Uh, he doesn't take durability loss, and durability is basically how um, broken your equipment is. And you got to spend gold to repair all that equipment when it breaks. Uh, like I said, if you're the items, you can't fix them once they're broken. So you got a limited time, basically, for those. Um, okay, let's get the rest of these items on just so you can kind of see a person wearing full gear here. That's an amulet. Uh, I don't actually have one right on this guy that could fit this character um, right now that's a little too high level for him but 
let me put on a few of these pieces of gear here um, but I need to put in some strength first so my total strength I think was uh, what was it 62 strength that I needed to wear all the stuff um, perfect I will equip all this stuff and so this shows my chance to hit which these low level mobs that I just hit were it's 95 percent chance because they're level one but normally you would add if you added more dexterity your attack rating would increase and it would make it more likely for you to hit monsters that displays the last monster you hit so that's why it's always 95 percent because he's so low level compared to me um so let's pump a little bit more life here give me a little bit of energy so we can um do a little bit more skills and then i'll put the rest into vitality here so we have a little bit of life so if you notice right now um, i can use the f buttons to set some of my abilities and rotate through them uh, but this is a list of all the ones I can set to right click. Uh, so I'm setting them on my F button keys so I can just hot swap them on that right. If you see that load next to my mana globe. So right now I'm going to cast a few of these buffs. These are shouts. And so you notice my health and my mana increased. Um, that's due to battle orders, um, which increases, you know, health and mana. Uh, shout, which also increases defense and battle command which if you notice all of my skills in the tree increased by one point temporarily so now i have two points in all my skills also uh my attack rating and the defense increased from the the shout which gives me mobs less chance to hit me as well as uh negating more damage when they do hit me but let's set some more skills we can put whirlwind on left click and there's a whirlwind and we can also hold shift and then left click and we can actually hold left or click multiple times while holding shift and we can basically uh, whirlwind around instead so if you're holding shift your guy will use your left click attack uh, anytime you press left click otherwise you have to be targeting a monster and press left click in order to use your ability so there's me whirlwinding through a little bit um, another uh, cool ability is Berserk and it converts it's a normal swing, but it converts all my physical damage to, to magic damage So that'll have that little uh, Effect over it. I just grabbed a shrine. That's an experience shrine You'll see different types of shrines throughout the game, uh, which is something to note But now we're gonna take a look at one of the fa my everybody's favorite barbarian skills leap This is fun. You can do a little jump it can kind of get over objects as well as knock people back. So we put a lot of points into Leap just now, just so I can show you how ridiculous this skill can be. So let's dump all of our skills into to Leap to get max it out, see how good we can get it. <laughs> this is pretty good. And you notice that it bumps them out of the way and kind of stuns them for a second. That's uh, one of everybody's favorite barbarian moves because you look so goofy. Um, anyway, so there's a few other things uh, we haven't talked about with regards to skills, but I'm going to uh, head back to town and we can talk about a few more things. One of the other things that I haven't mentioned yet is when there's items that fall on the ground after you kill a monster, you can hit the alt key and that'll kind of display uh, in text, just like I did there. There's one gold. If you hold down alt, you can see the items that have dropped in the ground rather than having to scroll over them. So um, that's a good way to uh, find items. I'm going to use this portal, town portal, and go to town, and we will continue where we left off. So I'm going to grab a weapon and a shield here so I can explain blocking for a moment. Blocking is a little bit different in this game. Um, so you have this base chance to block on your shield and that's used in a calculation that determines how high of a block chance you have this shield has a 75 percent chance to block if, block if you can see um, that's the base block and that's not your actual block chance but that goes into the calculation when you use that plus a certain amount of dexterity um, can get you to a maximum block rate of 75 percent so the more dexterity that you put into your character the closer you can get to 75 percent and there is sort of a magic number and it depends on your level and it depends on your shield so let's take a few points out of vitality here um, and we can try it so if you notice as i add points to dexterity my chance to block is slowly going up 
Now we want that to hit 75, and you want to not put any more into dexterity unless you need the dexterity for hit chance. So once you hit 75, if you notice, it doesn't increase past 75%. That's your hard cap. So the other thing about blocking that's kind of unique is that you can only block at 75% chance if you're standing still or you're walking. If your character's running like I am now, you can't block effectively. So if you press the R button, that will switch you to walking. That's your toggle run walk. If you're walking, your guy will retain its whole chance to block. Whatever that chance to block in your character screen said, that's your chance to block when you're walking or you're standing still. But when you're running, it you only get a third of the actual displayed block rate. So if, say, you have a 60% chance to block while running, you only have a 20% chance to block. So one other thing I haven't really talked about yet is synergies. And what a synergy is, is it is a bonus that you get from one skill that applies to a different skill. And it only works through hard points in that skill, which means if you get like an item on it that says plus one to firebolt, it's not going to actually help anything except firebolt. But if you put a hard point into firebolt, if you notice on fireball, um, fireball receives bonuses to fireball damage from having additional points in Firebolt. So by stacking certain skills that have similar synergies, you can actually increase those skills even after the skill point itself is maxed out at 20 points. So now let's uh, get to something a little different. Let's talk about animations and different types of um, cast rate, attack speed, all these sorts of things. So let's let's talk about cast rate first. This is the most common thing in Diablo here. So I have all these weapons and armor pieces that give faster cast rate, which increases the um, speed of my casting by lowering the amount of frames uh, that it takes to do the animation. So my normal cast animation is like this. This is how slow it is to cast a firebolt. But if I increase my, my cast rate, I reduce the amount of frames that it takes to cast, do the cast animation. So the more I have those, the quicker I cast. Now there's certain breakpoints of how much percentage faster cast rate I need to get for each type of character to hit those breakpoints and make my casting get the next step faster. So it'll be like one jumps from six frames to five frames to four frames. I'm not sure exactly how many frames it actually is, but that's a, a good way to describe it. Now weapon speed works the same way if you get increased attack speed uh, you can do it through physical attacks um, and also faster hit recovery which is a little different and hit recovery is an animation where when you get hit your character has to recover before they can start moving and casting again so by having faster hit recovery uh, makes you be able to recover quicker having faster attack speed will lower the animation to swing so your character will look like they're swinging quicker so all these things are adjustments to how quickly you can execute attacks in the game or um, other various movements. Now you can also get increased movement speed which makes me run faster and um, there's a few other modifiers like that but I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into itemization. So now I want to talk to you about immunities. Um, so in, in different difficulties there are mobs with immunities. Like this one is immune to cold here, this gargantuan beast. Which means any of my skills that do cold damage won't actually do damage to them. So if I use fire, like this firewall, I can kill them with fire, but I can't kill them with cold damage. Uh, this fallen here, immune to fire, so my firewall doesn't do anything to them. Um, there's ways of breaking the immunities, but it's uh, difficult. It requires some powerful items or powerful spells. Um, but this is a good reason why you might want to hybridize some of your builds so you can kill everything. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about is a uh, casting delay. Now, when I cast these frozen orbs, you notice I can't, I, I'm only casting them every second or so. 
But when I cast this Glacial Spike, I can cast it really fast. Well, that's because certain skills like Firewall and Frozen Orb have that little casting delay, which if you see my skills turn red at the bottom after I cast, that's a delay before I can cast again. So certain abilities have that, certain ones don't. And it's something you want to take account of, um, figuring out which abilities you should be able to spam or not. I'm going to put a few points into Teleport here uh, real quick. Uh, just so I can teleport around for a second. And I'm going to show you uh, the maps are randomly generated uh, every time you re-roll a new map. In, in multiplayer, that's every time you start a new game. Um, in single player, it saves unless you change difficulties. But, uh, you know, it, it randomly generates on your uh, mini-map like that as you explore the map. That's about all I got for the basics. I hope I uh, taught you something new and if not I hope I refreshed you a little bit uh, but give me a follow or like if you enjoyed the video and there'll be more to come soon thanks